Welcome to The Leather Journey. I'm Dex, and um, today we're just going to have uh, a continued discussion about spanking. Uh, spanking actually is one of the channel's most popular playlists, and uh, there's some avid spanking enthusiasts around the world. And we had a question about, you know, how I felt about spanking for discipline. Uh, and so we're going to talk about occasions for spanking today uh, and types of spanking. In my paradigm, there's three uh, types of spanking or occasions for, well, there are many occasions for spanking, but three types of spanking. The first type, is the type, the type that we mainly focused on on the channel is a play scene or a spanking done in a dungeon or as part of a spanko party for play. And those spankings can be done as part of a, a traditional scene where there's a good warm-up given, the butt's brought up to temperature, the endorphins are slowly ramped up, and then once you're ramped up, you have a nice, real hefty spanking and have a lot of fun doing it and a lot of fun giving it. Um, those are play spankings. Another type of spanking, though, uh, that in my paradigm relates to uh, a more permanent 24-7 or uh, a play setting where there's a collar involved or a, a, a long-term relationship more than just a one-time spanking that's done for play. So we have play spankings, we have maintenance spankings. And a maintenance spanking is done in a relationship to remind the bottom, and I'm wearing my Brat Tamer t-shirt, to remind the bottom or the submissive of their position in the relationship. And it's also done from, from a mechanical perspective of maintaining a leather butt uh, someone that's spanked regular, de regularly develops a leather butt and a tolerance for spanking. But if you don't have regular spankings, then you lose that leather butt and some of that tolerance that's been gained over uh, hours and years and multiple scenes. So in a relationship, you might have a maintenance spanking. Say, I'm going to give Moodstone two maintenance spankings a month. And arbitrarily, I look at my calendar and I say I'm going to do one on the 1st and one on the 15th. So approximately every two weeks, I'm turning her over my knee and giving her a maintenance spanking. Um, and it's not, it's just one of those things. It's on the calendar. It's something we're going to do today. It's time for your spanking. Uh, kind of like getting up and cooking breakfast. Uh, the other type of spanking, again, I see it, it could be, this could be, a discipline spanking could be done in a dungeon play setting, but typically I think of discipline spankings being more in a relationship kind of setting. Um, I've got my infamous three ring binder here, okay? We haven't gotten to it yet, but part of this three ring binder are rules for the house submissive. So what's gonna happen uh, if a house submissive intentionally break or in, in, who knows the rules and intentionally breaks the rules. As the house, house master, house dominant, I really can't let that slide or that kind of behavior is going to continue regardless of the purpose of the behavior, the reason for the behavior. The behavior is going to have to be corrected and perhaps I have pre pre or predetermined that breaking the house rules is going to result in a discipline spanking. So that discipline spanking might occur uh, in private, it might occur in front of the other ha family members or house members so that they know the rule's been broken, this is what the rule was, this is your punishment, don't do it again kind of thing. Uh, or it could even be done at a, at a larger gathering and at a play party in front of the party. But typically the discipline spanking, the punishment needs to relate directly to the crime. If someone broke a house rule, then it would be appropriate to do that discipline spanking in front of the house members or the family. If someone broke a, 
a party rule and a, uh, one of the house members broke a party rule at a dungeon party, then it might be appropriate to do that spanking in front of the larger uh, dungeon party because if we're going to have rules, we need to follow the rules. There's, there's, there's even rules and protocols for dominance involved. And as a leader, uh, we have to lead by example. The dominants are leading by example. Sometimes the submissives do it from a perspective of brattiness. They want to get in trouble because they enjoy the interaction uh, and that type of thing. Some, uh, some sub submissives like the concept of humiliation and like the humiliation of being punished and disciplined in front of someone else that might end up, you know, everyone has different interests and different fetishes that might be something that they're into. If you're in a relationship and you've negotiated that relationship and you've negotiated the rules that are going to be followed during that relationship, then punishment for breaking those rules or breaking that contract uh, is part of the it's part of the deal. Uh, you're always you know, all play, whether it's whether it's scene play, maintenance play, discipline play is consensual. I mean, at any point. Someone can say, Red, I need a timeout, uh, request a break from their contract. It's up to the dominant to decide whether to give that break or not. Um, but most contracts, we haven't talked about contracts in the lifestyle, but most contracts in the lifestyle uh, have, uh, a, besides a safe word, have a timeout. Sometimes you just need a timeout to take a breather and or have some free time and some space. And that's again something that's negotiated between the dominant and the submissive. But I see those three types as the main types of spanking. You have play spankings, maintenance spankings, and discipline spankings. Uh, my goal is a, is a, a top that is leading a relationship and guiding the relationship is to provide the kind of guidance uh, where I don't have to do those discipline spankings. I don't like that aspect of a relationship. And if I was in a relationship where I constantly had to be providing discipline, I probably wouldn't be in that relationship very long. I would release the person from their collar and let them go find another path because I'm not interested in spending all my time and energy disciplining someone who, uh, who isn't sincere enough and interested enough in leather to want to please me and follow my protocols and, and my house rules. But again, that's me personally. There are couples that get into that dynamic, that play dynamic, and, uh, and, and it's a thing for them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody's leather journey is different. I hope this was helpful in answering your question. Uh, if not, keep watching and we'll see where the leather journey takes us. As always, thank you. Thank you, thank you for watching the leather journey.